Hey everybody, it is TA Masterclass Thursday. Hey everybody, and I haven't done one of these in a while because the markets have been insane. So let's jump in. This one has been very heavily requested as well by many of you out there. So let me make sure I've got the right camera on. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go through uh, one of the tools that took us over 13 months to build and it's designed for people who cannot stay glued to a screen 24 seven and trade, but people who maybe can check the monitor in the morning or at lunchtime or in the evening or at the weekend and help them make decisions that are tested and back tested. And we call this the augmented trading range model or ATR for short. Let me make sure I have everything working here. Yes, and of course, this is <laughs> edutainment, as you know, and uh, there's nowhere else where you can get this type of information. So don't forget to subscribe. We cover it all. And the markets, again, I can't, uh, I can't even believe what 2023 has been. And every day it just gets better. Anyway, it's insane. But uh, what matters is timing, purchases, and being in the right things at the right time. So this ATR is not just, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to introduce it. Then we're going to demonstrate it. And we're going to look at some data behind it and back tests and results and then some conclusions. And then I'll open up some Q&A as well. Forgot to mention that. But basically, um, the ATR, the augmented trading range, is not just buy and sell indicators. It's so much more. And that's why it took so long to build because the original idea from my little brain was to work with the development team and build something that would determine the liveness of an asset. Is something dead? Especially, it was really originally geared for crypto. Could it determine if something is not going to move off the dead layer. I used to call this the zombie coefficient. We've done away with that because you don't want to upset people. Anyway, <laughs> that was the first mission. Second, it became a layer model to identify support and resistance layers. Third, it became a model with dual signal logic. This is unique. This has never happened before. It's kind of like a 48 volt car or something. It is very, very unique. And uh, we'll walk through exactly what that means in a minute too. Also, you get buy and sell signals based on Helix and you get a back test and you get four levels of noise suppression. And it is definitely the most versatile tool of its kind on the planet. And I'll show you everything you need to know about it as well. So first of all, it has a number of different components. Let's look at the layers first and uh, make sure Everybody can hear me okay. Uh, yeah, Andy and the moderators in the chat, thank you all for being here. So let's look at the layers. Uh, first of all, it has six layers. Uh, sometimes I work in fives, but this is six. And this actually are the layers for Solana right now. And you can see a couple of things. You can see blue is up, orange is down. Okay, that means trend is down, trend is up. But you can see as well those key levels of support and resistance from the past that the system automatically calculates. Also, the very top layer is the all-time high of an asset. And sometimes there can be breakouts. So if we look later at... Yeah, think of things you want to look at. We can pull up some live ones as well in the Q&A and look at some assets and how you actually dial it in. We can look at currencies, commodities, crypto, pairs, crypto pairs, <laughs> anything else. But these are the layers. Second part is there is a helix trend. It's not a trend per se, but it's like a helix type shape. And when it flips, that's your signal. Then the second signal logic, you've never had a system before, were two, and you can choose which one you prefer. And also the back test will tell you which one is best for that particular asset in that particular time frame. We have the helix deviation which is kind of tied into our whole thing of mean reversion. I always believe everything mean reverts and it's a little trickier to use, but also very, very effective for certain assets as well as we go forward. Then we have back test settings. I'll walk through this in a, in a live example, but you can configure your start date, your end date. End date goes out into the future, so it only takes the prices up to the current point in time end date or start date. If you're looking at something like gold, you can go back 20 years, <coughs> silver, etc. If you're looking at something like a new crypto, hey, Stephen, hey, Hudson the dog, thanks for coming. If you're looking at a new crypto, maybe they only got listed in 2021. If you're looking at something like CleanSpark, you go back to January 2020. It all depends on where you want. And what I did for this analysis, uh, important to know, I picked the all-time high for the assets for the back test so we could incorporate how the model works during a bear market 
and the results will impress you. In addition, there's a couple of things you can toggle here. Not just the time frame, but the position of the back test table. If you don't like it on the right, you can put it at the bottom, the top, wherever you want. Uh, also, you can set up your order trig trigger. You can do at bar close if you're doing shorter term trading or exactly at the signal. Um, then <laughs> you have your exit type. Uh, I prefer LIFO, which is last in, first out, but you can do a percentage of holdings like we do with our exit plans or FIFO, fi first in, first out. Also, your exit fee. Sometimes people incur a fee to sell. If you're selling on Coinbase, maybe they take 2 or 3%. That can hurt, but uh, I encourage you to find places with no fees. Then, of course, there's the exit type we covered, LIFO, FIFO, and uh, the entry percentage fee, too. And the amount, the entry type, the percentage of your current bag. Sometimes I like to double tap into assets. M phase is a classic example. I bought in at, I think it was 120. It took a dip below 80. So I bought in at 80. I double tapped in. And you can say, allocate 10,000 to the trade. The first buy is 5,000. Second buy is 5,000. And you can figure it all in here in your back test. Remember, this enables you to test and paper trade without committing any money, therefore not losing any money. Get comfortable with the test before you jump in. In addition, this is the back test results. ATR is the tool, BT is backtest, and you can see your profit, your ROI, your win percentage, the number of buys, the number of sells. Now, when, when it says, for example, 14 buys and 11 sells, that means you could have three open positions. You're not out of all the positions, and the, the model takes that into account as well. In addition, you've got your open and your capital and your total. So you start with 10,000, which you configure here with the initial capital, and you'll see its initial capital is 10,000, and then you'll see how much you've made after so many trades, and it'll take you up to say 18, 19,000. Some results will blow your mind, some results are average, but therefore you invest in the assets that have the most blow your mind results. Then the other thing that's also important, because this impacts the results and the back test, is the type of line that you choose. Now, I like two types of lines. I like Haken Ashi and straight old regular line. Most of what I do is using the straight old regular line. Uh, and I'll show you that as well. I don't muck about with candles or hollow candles, etc. But sometimes I like Haken Ashi. And we will show you exactly the impact of Haken Ashi on actual results. For some assets in some time frames, it actually does better which is super interesting. And remember, the Haken Ashi takes data and it creates an indicator. And we go back to the signal amount where you actually uh, close out the order trigger. If it's on the signal or at the bar close, again, tied in to the type of line. Don't forget that. Some people forget that too. And so I'm only going to look at two lines, straight old regular blue line and sometimes the Haken Ashi because it is interesting. All right. So now uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk you through a, a kind of a guide, a live guide of how the tool actually works and how you configure it, how you dial it in and how you see the back test change. Then I will do some more detailed analysis of what you need to look for across the different results. Then we'll open up to live Q&A. So ready to go? Let me try and share my screen here and um, pop this up. Bear with me and I'm going to make it full screen. Some people don't like it. I don't do full screen. So, and again, thank you to everybody in the chat for coming. I'm not going to be able to see the chat while I do this for now, but let me see if I can pop up my screen. And hopefully you can see that. In fact, you don't need to see me while I do this. Or if you want, you can. I'll make myself very small so you know I'm actually around. I'll hide myself up here in the corner so I don't get in the way of the actual charts. Um, now, looking at the charts here, there's a couple of things I happen to land on CleanSpark. We will analyze that from the back test. And it looks really, really busy. But boy, look at the results today. Solana, $93. Wow. Um, what else is popping? Um, a lot of stuff. Crazy. Even Tesla's up $7, which is nice. All right. So let's go through the actual indicator. To pull up any indicator that we have, you go to your invite-only scripts, and it'll be here. It's IAATR model. It's got 154 likes. And then you click on it, and it pops. Then within the model itself, 
here this is a lot of different settings you, depending on the colors you like you can change them by clicking these buttons and you see it change in real time and this also helps it be more accessible to people who are a little bit colorblind like myself then the amount of transparency for the actual helix itself i like 70 but you can do 60 50 you can make it fully dark whatever you like then your signal logic this is so important you can have it based on trend and that is it'll trigger the buy or the sell when the trend turns then you have deviation which again when you deviate beyond a certain standard deviation from the mean it'll trigger a buy or a sell and then you can have none uh, most of the time i use trend sometimes if i can't dial trend in with an 80 plus percent win rate i switch to deviation and that also works for things like commodities gold sometimes currencies as well because they tend to move a bit slower so deviation can work and the beauty of deviation is you can get these pico moments so let's let's this is clean spark all right we you can also custom anchor the tracker so it'll do it for you automatically but i like to land it myself so as you can see here this is the anchor this little thing here and we'll just take it to the beginning of time for clean spark and let's go back into the settings the back test we can turn it on or off if we go false it'll disappear if we turn it on it's there um and then the position if you want the back test on the top bottom middle left whatever you can just move it around the place and you can make it very small if you've got very good eyes i don't i need it big and then the initial capital ten thousand you can make that whatever money you want thousand dollars five hundred bucks a hundred bucks a million dollars doesn't matter and then the order like we walk through on signal and then here uh, i have the expenses exit fee and entry fee zero because i use places that they don't have any uh, as best i can or i pay a fee to make sure i don't have any fees and then uh, lifo very important you can use fifo you can use percentage of holdings this has an impact on the actual not the win rate but on the actual roi as well because i like to double tap into things double tap out and sometimes you'll see two buy signals and then two sell signals so that is the back test now if we go and tweak this let's move this down here and we'll switch we are now in trend if we go to deviation watch the back test win rate is higher roi is 134 percent but if we go back to trend you can see the roi is 23,000 percent so i have to stress i'm going to stress this a few times you can go for your win rate to be 100% or you can optimize your ROI. I like the win rate to be above 75, 80% and to maximize the ROI because that's what it's about at the end of the day. I did tell you this is very versatile. Um, then you have your noise suppression. So if we, we leave it in trend uh, here, if we have high noise suppression, that basically silences a lot of buy and sell signals and it sets you up for pico moments to buy and sell. This is extremely powerful. If you're somebody who is say, can only look at the charts once a day or something, you, you could can turn it to high noise suppression and just wait. You, sometimes you'd have to wait, say a couple of weeks between a buy and a sell signal and that's fine. We are also on the 12 hour chart here. You, it, this is optimized for the 12 hour to the one day primarily but it'll, i'll show you later how it works for all sorts of different things as well and uh, what else um yeah let's play with the noise suppression see exactly what happens here actually i move this to the right uh, so you can see it change live we'll turn noise suppression from high to medium and see if that impacts the results the win rate goes down roi goes down too so medium sucks on clean spark if we go to low you can see here 100 percent win rate an ROI is 485%. That is extremely good, everybody. But if we turn off noise suppression, and if you can actively trade this puppy, all right, look at the number of buys and sells going back. That'd be 31 buys, 16 sells. If we turn it to none, it turns to 55 buys, 54 sells. So we're only have one position open, but the ROI goes through the roof. We're much more actively trading. We turn $10,000 into 2.4 million. And yes, it sounds crazy, but you can do the math yourself, back test it yourself, and you'll see that it does work. So that's basically how the system works. And when we do the q and I walk through some other examples too. We'll play with, like I tend to optimize these tools around what I play with mostly. So we see here on the list, we've got Ethereum, Tesla, MicroStrategy, 
Bit Farms Clean Spark Cipher. I also used it last night to pair trade. I'll show you my pink list. This is a pair trade I got into last night. Uh, I swapped Pith for Radium. And it's hard to see here, but if you go to the 30 minute chart, and again, if you got the time, you can trade it like this. Uh, you can win 76.9% of the time, ROI 491%, and that's only in a couple of weeks, but you gotta be active on it. But this trade I made yesterday is up 47.95% in a day, which is pretty good as well. All right, now I'm gonna go back, and then we're gonna come back and look at more charts, but I want you to ask me what charts you want to look at. Um, but I have a couple of things to show you first. Uh, let me make sure, um, yeah, I assume I'm sharing myself. Um, pop this up again. Uh, yeah, well, let me know if I'm not. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time I screwed up. So I wanna, I wanna talk through, this is, again, there's a lot of moving parts, but it is also the most powerful tool. So there's only so much you can simplify things. And literally when we were building this, say we got to the most complex level was about three or four months ago. We had so many levers and toggles. We eliminated all that and made it as simple as possible to just having the base stuff. But I do want to talk about the signal logic first. That's when we switch between the deviation, which is like a mean reversion indicator versus the trend indicator, okay? So this is kind of the math across all the assets I tested. And I'll show you all of the assets I test and I show you the results of investing 10,000 in each. But the trend-based logic is predominantly used uh, typically about 30% of the time. Also, Haken Ashi is the favorite candlestick for some assets. And this can smooth out price data and reduce noise. Remember, we got noise reduction, not only from the noise reduction toggle, but also from the type of line you use. And again, signal logic variation changes for different time frames. This is the, again, there's no two assets that are alike. Even the same assets on different exchanges can behave differently because they move slightly differently. And that's why you need to have all of these little levers that you can pull to optimize your trading experience and help you win. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I want the community to do better. And this helps you. Like with these tools, you've got much more confidence going into a trade, much higher win rates. I'm not happy with myself unless I'm winning four times out of five. And if I lose on one of those times, I had to cut my losses short. And this also helps with that too. Let's talk about uh, noise suppression signals. Also important, you saw the four different settings. Um, again, you have your none, your medium, your low, your high, etc. There is no one size fits all, but if you can actively trade, none really works. And high finds your Pico opportunities as well. So between none and high, they're the two best. And I'll show you the data behind that too. Also, there is no clear correlation between noise suppression and ROI. Very important. This is Again, every asset's different. Therefore, the results are always different. But you can analyze years and years of trades and identify and tile in exactly what you need to do to be successful. Also, I'll stress this again. I'm going to talk about this three times. It's very, very important. Don't go for the 100% win rate. Maximize the ROI. That's where the money is at. You might be able to make 3% in a trade. Who cares? But we can make 2,000%. That's better. And if you can make 2,000% but only win 80% of the time, that's way better than winning 100% of the time and making 2%. Okay, so I hope that's clear. And here you can see the ranges across all the ones I've tested. You know, the worst performer was actually Coinbase, a 12.7% return up to 23,000 over two or three years. And win percentage is generally high. Most tickers are above 80%. And the total balance and ROI on 10K also varies. We'll break that down in great detail. And again, hammer home, VIP, optimize your ROI. Get your minimum win percentage above 75, 80, and then max the ROI. So these are some examples of what I mean by that. You can see here, you could have a 93.9% .9 win rate with a monster 23,000 ROI. Or you can get a 94% win rate with a 2,000% ROI. Which one would you prefer? the lower win rate actually matters. Also, even an 83.3% smashes the 94% or in some cases 100%. So again, very, very important. Now, 
This is another piece of magic that we have created, and I'll walk you through the live one as well. But for the testing for this particular video, I looked at a whole smattering of assets, including currencies, etc. But I focused heavily on things like the stuff that I trade very, very well. NVIDIA, MicroStrategy, uh, like I sold calls on NVIDIA at 500 bucks, absolutely nailed the top to within a dollar almost and bought them back at 70% off. Uh, MicroStrategy is in there, uh, Meta, Bitcoin, Enphase, Solana, Ray Pith, playing with that on the one hour. This thing is designed for 12 to 24 hour optimization. It works on the one hour, but I do not recommend it, okay, because it'll give you a lot of signals and be very busy. Uh, Tesla, um, CleanSpark, S&P 500, Coinbase, Gold, Trade Desk, Uranium, Oil, Shopify, an ETF called XLE, and there's something else in there I can't quite see, but um, whatever it is at the bottom, it's also in deviation. Now, the things to notice here is the time frame, uh, 12 hour, one day, sometimes two days, sometimes six hours, sometimes eight hours, sometimes 12 hours. It's all over the place, even one hour is in there. And then you have a tick box for whether you want Heikinashi or, uh, can you please describe how, oh, I hope these are questions coming later. Anyway, uh, whether you use Heikinashi or just line, if you want to get really sophisticated, you can start testing a whole bunch of different candles and everything else too. Also your signal logic, you can see here, deviation only worked for two of them, but the more you go into what I call stodgy assets, the better deviation works, especially if you're, only able to look at the computer once every five days and you trade gold, that can work very well for you. Then there's noise suppression. You can see that most of them are none or high. There's a couple of mediums and lows, but most are none. And then second most are high. As I mentioned, high will get you your Pico opportunities. Then you got your ROI, which again, you know, clean spark ROI. You can see it works best on the 12 hour and Hey Kanashi beats line. For, for CleanSpark. Uh, and the win rate with the Haken Ashi is 93.9% versus 83% with the line. And uh, what I've also done is on the far right corner, I've got what's called the ROI and the initial 10,000 investment. And you can see the worst performer is Coinbase, which is on deviation too, 20% result. So you turn $10,000 into $12,000, not very exciting. But if you look at CleanSpark, you can turn $10,000 into 2.3, 2.5, 2.6 million dollars. And that is insane. So I'll walk you through that sheet as well. And before we jump in, uh, people will ask uh, where this is. <coughs> it's on our website, investanswers.io. It's ATR. Literally, we almost give this thing away. Uh, it's the cost of two thirds of a Solana coin right now. And uh, it's just to cover the manual process of getting it into your hands, okay? And uh, quick conclusions, and then we'll go do some live Q&A. First of all, summary again, this is very important, you can't trip up, you can't miss any of these points. Heikinashi is favored 30% of the time, 70% straight line, but you can test it yourself, find your rhythm. Trend-based logic is also predominant. It wins most of the time. Deviation works for stodgy assets. Uh, noise suppression levels vary. By the way, on stodgy assets, if you are trading something in a market that's not very sophisticated, like I don't want to name the countries, but I know the ones where they could have certain assets and the average investor doesn't use these types of tools, deviation will crush it. Um, I could name some countries. One is at the very bottom of the world making some news right now. The other one is part of the UK Commonwealth. Uh, and there, there are assets that only locals know. And it works really well for those things too. Um, also, noise suppression levels vary. Again, it's either none or high works best for most. No clear correlation between noise suppression ROI, wide range of ROI, as we saw, and high win percentages for most tickers. If you can't make something work, move on to the next asset. Don't waste your time with uh, something that doesn't have it. And each asset has its own rhythm and this tool will help you find your rhythm. So uh, let's go into Q&A because the best thing is when you throw questions at me and then <laughs> I, we dial in things live. So I'm going to go back to sharing my actual screen. <coughs> Excuse me. Still got that little naggy cough. And here we are. So I'm still here, but I'm going to do live Q&A for you all. And I know somebody popped the questions to me. So let me see. First question is from 
Do de do. Can you please describe how best to choose the most relevant NS noise suppression level for best results? Well, let's pull up an example. Um, now, <laughs> I've never looked at Bonk. Uh, I'd be afraid to look at Bonk. But uh, well, when you have a question, let me know what you want me to look at. Let's look at Bitcoin for simplicity. And we'll go to what I call my green list. And then we'll sort this by the biggies. And Bitcoin's at 43.8. All right. So we'll go back to the very beginning. We'll go to the settings. We'll start this actually 2021. Let's start this at the top of the bull. Um, and we'll, this should be on 30 minutes. We'll go to the daily chart first. One day. And it's good that we go through all this exercise. And here you can see the anchor. I'm going to drop the anchor at the top of the bull market. All right. And here uh, you can see, all right, first of all, I don't even know what settings is that. This is on trend. Let's move this to the right. Uh, ATR levels are true. Indicators on. We have LIFO, 50% percent of current, double tap in, double tap out. Noise suppression here is none. Okay, for Bitcoin. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to toggle the time. Three things. Toggle the time. Toggle the line. The lines are up here. Actually, let's just toggle the line first. We'll see if Haken actually works better than line. So it's 83.3 with a 246 ROI. And we'll jump into here. 84, but the ROI is smaller. Therefore, for Bitcoin, I prefer the line. It's more precise, especially for when there's manipulation happening in the market. All right, next, we will look at the actual time frame. Actually, let's leave this first. Let's try, see if we get better on the 12 hour or eight hour on Bitcoin. Better ROI, better win percentage. Okay, then we'll stay here. Then we'll go to the actual settings again. And here we'll go to noise suppression. Now, we need to watch this uh, very carefully. Noise suppression is at none. We've got 608% ROI, 87% win rate. Let's go to high. 49, 71 is no good. Medium, four, and win percentage, 93%. That's what I was talking about earlier. You can get a huge crushing win percentage, but crappy ROI, you don't want that. We go to low. 35, 76, no. So the best one for Bitcoin is zero noise suppression. That's what you got to do. You got to dial it in. And when you're doing that actually as well, let me show you the magic. This is a example backtest sheet I put together today uh, using JDog's template. This is dated December 21st, 2023. And here I looked at all the different assets and you can see how they perform. These are stat ranked by ROI. But uh, let's play with say Shopify did really well, Trade Desk did really well. These are things that I've traded for a long time. There's a reason I trade them. Is they're easy to get huge returns. Solana is a beast, 8,900% 8, return. And it's only been around for a couple of years. Uh, we can look at Solana too. Uh, Bitcoin down the line, but the worst performer is Coinbase. There is no asset that I could not make profitable using this model, all right? But Coinbase for some reason just sucks. It could be because it's just been on a downward trend since the uh, IPO, but it has bounced up to 160, I think, from the bottom. Anyway, indexes are here too. S&P 500, 100% win ratio, but again, you only make 40% ROI. Um, this is the this is the one day, the daily on the S&P 500, and on the six hour, you get 74% ROI, 91.7% win rate. See the way the win rate goes down, but the ROI goes up. Very important. And then MicroStrategy and other stuff is in there. And then we have other people that have their own uh, testing as well and how they do it. So again, the whole community can collaborate on this and share ideas and everything else. So <laughs> that's how you manage the noise suppression for optimizing your results. Uh, XX, does the backtest assume a stop loss on losing trades? No, it doesn't. It actually assumes, and this is where you can make the results even better. If you enter a trade, let's pull in one here, for example. Uh, say, for example, well, um, here's 5554. We need to pick a different asset for a second because I want to show you exactly how that works, how sometimes you can be actually in multiple trades. This is MicroStrategy, 80% win rate, 40-40. Let's go to Meta. I'm looking for something that has a lot of uh, still open deals. Google, 5049. Osol, wow, Osol. 
That is absolutely, completely bonkers, ladies and gentlemen. I can't even believe my eyes. But here you can see we're still in. So imagine, <laughs> this is Osol here. Imagine we bought, um, <laughs> it does kind of kick you out. There are examples. Let me go back to my back test sheet. Uh, actually, I can go back to, what was the one I showed? Where it had, it had us still in trades. I'm going to find one. End phase, let's see. Uh, 4039, Avalanche, 6463. Let's change the time frame to the daily and see if it double taps us in, double taps us out. But uh, the point is, there can be a situation. We're not seeing it here. Like here, this is a good example. Uh, you bought here, but the trend was down <laughs> and you sold at a loss. So this is an example of it telling you to get out. This is like a little stop loss here is a good example. Um, buy, trend flips, gets you out. Here is another example. Uh, well, this one worked really well, but this one kind of caught you out. So that would be an example of a trade where it stops you out based on a signal. But if you, do, if you can turn the signal even better using some of our other things like the trend model, like if you have this, um, and you can really fine tune it, turn this super tight, which it is. Let's zoom into this problem area right now, see if that would have saved our bacon. Um, this was the buy, and it's hard to see. The buy was very short, and the trend immediately turned. So technically, if you're using the trend model, you would have gotten out at this level immediately before it turned orange. So that's a, a good point there to note as well. I love doing these questions. Um, Nit par, how do you find the pairs to trade? Aha, great question. Um, let's go. I have, I have what I call what I'm doing right now is, I've got different pair trades. So this is Sol paired against all the usual suspects. You can see here. Um, you can let's let's do Sol BTC for example. See, this is not a good one to pair trade because. When you have Solana going up all the time, everything's going to lose. Everything's going to bleed against it. So let's forget that. Then I have a quote, what I call my pink list. And here I've got some pairs. I've got Sol against Pith. Uh, and we have to go in a much shorter time frame because because Pith is brand new. So let's go to 30 minutes on this one. And here, 94.62% win rate, 300%. I used this tool last night to swap Pith for Radium. And uh, this is the result of that. Uh, as, again, 77%. Let's try and make this one a little bit better because this is not, I had a much higher win rate yesterday when I had this, but it's 77% win rate. The, we can change the time first. We go to 15 minutes. That's better. 15 minutes works way better on this, what I had last night. And let's see if the Haken Ashi actually works better too. Boom. Uh, yes. 682 versus 88. Let me, I can't remember. No. Line is better. So you stick with line. And then let's go play with some noise suppression. Let's see if we can amp this up. Currently 1200% ROI, 83% win rate. If we go to high, 76.9. That sucks. It's still good. If we average trade, that'd be amazing. But uh, ROI, 0.12%, 82% win rate. Not good. Low, 13%. A little better, but still not good enough. We want much higher. And here you can see zero suppression works crushes it and again don't try get that 100 percent win rate maximize the roi too you got to work at them both uh, i am working on a separate tool that will optimally find the perfect optimization and hopefully be able to identify the perfect settings for the asset based on the time frame that you can do as well so i hope that helps uh, let me see if there's more questions bring on more questions um, um how responsive is the signal response the signal response is extremely responsive. Uh, it's based on real time, the, the chart itself. Now, if you're trading on something like the daily time frame, your signal response will be a little, well, I can't do it on this Sol Pith, but let's go to say Orca, see where that is. And you can see the signal response. It's technically a turn here. You get the signal response 15 minutes later, but we're on the 15 minute chart. So, but if you're on the daily time frame, let's check that out and try to see how precise it is uh, down here. Uh, sometimes, you know, 
This one would, wouldn't have worked, see? You buy here and you, you would have sold at a loss. Then you bought here and then you sold here at a big gain. But that's the beauty. That's the 15% means 15% of the time it doesn't work. But don't sweat that too much, especially if you have the other trend model then you can get out faster. I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, this is extra tight and this trend turned right here. So you would have gotten an out way before the sell signal on the ATR with the trend model. So that's important to look at. A um, <clears throat> couple more questions. RV Management USA. Do the buy signal, do the buy sell signals mean you are selling your entire position and then buying your entire position? Or does it tell you how much to sell? So I like to double tap in, double tap out. If I don't get my second buy, I just leave it. For example, yesterday I sold half my pith and converted into radium and I made 50%. Uh, and I did that using Jupiter. So uh, it, it just depends. I, I didn't want to sell my whole position, but that's just my style. You can do thirds. If you want to do a third uh, RV management, you could go here. And if you want to triple tap in, I find double tap is the best, but you could just change this to 33%. And watch how the ROI will actually change too. Um... I didn't see what it was before. But anyway, I like it 50-50. It works best for me uh, as we go. Let me put it back or else I'll forget to put it back. And let's go get some more questions. And <clears throat> yeah, and then re regarding the sale, like, like for example, it's a very good question. Things like after Solana, or what it's done lately. Uh, one of the things I did do as well, I, I made... Um, I, nearly tripped my money on bonk and I moved that into things like pith <laughs> and then I moved pith into things like radium so that's a good example but I kept I think one third of my bonk I sold two thirds of it so it's not 50 50 all the time but sometimes I like to keep a little bit of a position too uh Jimmy Neal do you use ATR more often than DCAS a uh, DCAS is for stacking I use IDSS and ATR right now for all my trading. I look at both. Normally I have them open at the same time. You can see confluence model is here. I like to see how it compares and silence one and leave the other on. So it all, it all depends, but I keep everything open. I like multiple points of reference uh, before I make a decision. Um, but ATR I've been testing right now for 15 minute charts on Solana alts. Uh, in full disclosure, I'm trying to find a perfect way to pair trade between Solana alts. Um, Staunch, would you recommend trading options with ATR model? And if so, expirations you would consider? Yeah, so I used uh, both ATR and, let's go to NVIDIA, because that's what I use this for. Um, it found the top, I can't remember the exact settings I was on right now. Let's go to my green list. Green list of things that I actually hold. In most cases, uh, we would have been much shorter time frame, like one hour. And I gotta wait for it to fire up. So sometimes uh, it won't fire if it doesn't have enough data. So we try four hours. So that's an example of the four hour here at 502 bucks, the sell signal fired. That's, so I was waiting for this kind of blue trend to ride all the way up. And then I sold a call here against NVIDIA. I sold the 500s for $40 and bought them back for like 14 or 15 or 16 bucks. I can't remember exa exactly. So that's how I use this as well to play options. And most of the stuff I do is options trading. Um, uh, Josh, I'm learning perp trading on Jupiter. Would you recommend this or IDSS for capturing short-term volatility? This is a great starter tool. IDSS is the pro level tool. So if you want to really nail perps, IDSS is the one for you. Um, and Ed Bindi, does this tool only work in the bull cases? No, this all of the back testing that you see here is basically from the top of the bull market to today. All these results. I could have very easily cheated and taken it from the bottom of the bear and see how the results differ. Uh, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to show how this thing performs in a down market and an up market as well. Super, super important. So if, let me see, if there's any more questions, I have one more. Do you have to be an experienced trader for this? I'm still in the learning process. Um, this is, we, we try to build tools that take 
all of the complexity out of trading out of trading with simple little buy sell flags. Let's go back to the uh, daily time frame. Let's pick something easy. Let's go back to kind of my trade desk, Shopify trade. Um, that's a good one. Let me see. So I'll take it as my macro watch list. Because uh, things like Coinbase, Trade Desk, Shopify. Shopify is a lot of fun to play with. But we have to go into a little more precise in the time. So here we have ROI and Shopify. Uh, like literally as a beginner, it's real simple. You buy on a buy signal. Imagine you're down here. This is the beautiful $46 opportunity we had not too long ago. And everything is volatile. You can just put your list together and watch these things. So you buy, you ride it up till the trend turns. And that gives you the sell signal. Then you get out and then you buy again. And you ride it up, sell. And then you buy again. So we've taken all the literally 95% of the heavy lifting out of trading for beginners. But remember, always test first. Make a copy of something like this, test about 20 assets, get really comfortable understanding how things move. The reason I only invest in very few things is because I know exactly how they move. I know exactly when Tesla's going to pop and when I can buy and layer in. And I know exactly when to sell a call against something like NVIDIA because of these tools. So um, yeah, anybody can use it. But again, investing is a blood sport and respect it when you play these games, all right? Um, but we give you an incredible edge. Um, <laughs> at, uh, that, that's the mission, just to help retail investors smash Wall Street. That's all I want to do. Uh, okay, one more from Mark Olson. So basically, we can tweak the settings to anything that maximize our ROI and win percentage as long as we start time frame at the peak of... No, 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 no. I started the time frame at the peak of the last bull, so it wouldn't look like I'm cheating. Okay, now there's ways of making this even more explosive. Instead of just buying and selling, what about buying and then getting out of your position and then buying a put or selling a call? Then you can really amplify your gains, kind of like pair trading on steroids. That's next level. The reason I chose this time, like if I go to that pair again that I showed you, uh, the pink list, Ray Pith. I can only go back because this pair only exists since the 23rd of November. All right. And here on the 12 hour, you don't get any signals. So you got to go into the 15 minute to get your signals. So here, um, you know, it's only been for a couple of weeks, but you can make 1200% on, you can turn 10 grand into 129 grand since, what's that? What date is that? When do we begin here? Uh, 20th of November, 23rd of November, but you got to trade a lot. That's 160 buys and 160 sells. Let's tweak this if you can't. And this means because you're trading crypto, you got to be up 24 hours a day and watch it, which is a real pain. Let's turn a little noise suppression on to high and see how the results go. You could still win 70% of the time and make 61% ROI with high noise suppression. But look at that, the sell. See, if I wasn't doing this video now, I would have swapped my radium into something else. <laughs> There's the sell signal at the very, very top. So um, that's what it does for you. Anyway, thank you all for coming. Um, I know the people that love this stuff really love it. Uh, people don't want to get too technical. <laughs> don't like it so much, but thank you all for coming. It is a lot to process, but it is the most powerful tool anywhere on the planet. And I'm wager anybody if they can find something better than this. And uh, this is, you know, three decades of experience and a brilliant development team that made these crazy visions come to life. So I'm very grateful for them and grateful for this community. So thank you so much. Yeah, J, J Mike UK. That's not financial advice to sell Ray, but that's a sell signal here on the 50 minute chart, which means 70% of the time it's right. And remember, this is a pair. This is Ray against Pith. So if Pith is rallying uh, and Ray is not, the pair de facto goes down, okay? So Pith, you can see, has rallied a bit uh, today. Not too much. So you got to always, wrapping your heads around pairs can be very, very complex. So be careful when you do that too, as well. All right. So I want to thank everybody for coming. Hope you enjoy the show. Drop any suggestions down below. If I went too fast or it's too complex or any kind of features you'd be more interested in, 
let me know. And a big thank you to the mods in chat and everybody for turning up. I'll see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll be doing a minor video and maybe an emergency crypto video if things, if, if Solana hits a hundred bucks, wow. And it's not far from doing that. Today, I think we hit 95, if I'm not mistaken. 95.35, yep. Bonkers time to be alive. And we haven't even gotten close to the Bitcoin halving. Oh, another reminder, everybody, there's people talking about profit taking and selling now. Unless you're really good with tools and can time it perfectly, we have a long way to run, ladies and gentlemen. So I just want to share that piece of information too. Thank you all for coming. See you later. Bye-bye.